This gun is so awesome. It's actually a Golani Sporter, not a real Galil. I think Century Arms is going to bring it back into production soon. It'll sell like crazy. By the way, I'm totally lying. I mean exactly the opposite of everything I just said. <laughs> Here's another negative tabletop review in TMP. And the summer of fails keeps on trucking. Unabated. Yeah, it's... Man, it's bad, dudes. I wish I had a lot of good things to say, but I don't. Uh, first, some backstory on how I got the gun. It's a loaner. Thank you, Mike, for loaning me your gun. I appreciate it. Uh, at the time, though, Mike said it was a real Galil, and I was like, oh, awesome. Yeah, I've been wanting to hook into one of those for a while. Uh, I always like learning myself and learning with new systems, albeit from the 60s and 70s. It all adds to the body of knowledge. I'm a student, uh, probably just like you, and so I'm like, hey, great opportunity. Uh, I went to go get the gun, and I've come to find out it's not a real Galil. It's a Golani Sporter by Century Arms. Produced from such and such date to such and such date. I don't really know, don't really care. I went on their website tonight, though, and they're not listing it, so doesn't appear to be currently in production right now. Now, there is, or at least was, a lot of interest in the Galil. It was that way... For me, growing up in the 70s, 80s, on into the 90s, 90s, you would hear guys talk about the Galil all the time. And like they've done with other models, like the C93, they'll produce, uh, you know, pretty much a hodgepodge parts gun from the parts bin to create, not the genuine item, but uh, a facsimile, we could call it. Uh, pretty close, shootable, uh, pretty inexpensive, actually. So guys that always wanted that gun, just like I said in the C93 review, can go get it. As opposed to buying the real thing, which would be prohibitively expensive. I think we all get that. That's totally cool. Now the question is, how do I do the review? Because uh, one guy, and it was a fair comment, a fair criticism. He's like, I forget which video it was. He goes, uh... Maybe it's a C93, and he goes, hey, well, you know, we do have modern, modern sensibilities, and that's why I have the AR in the background right there. That's a TMP uh, AR-15 that I put together, uh, just super quick. It's got a BCM barrel, BCM forehand, mag tactical, lower, uh, MFT, mag pull. Uh, it's got an ACO red dot sight on there. So it kind of represents the current thinking, and to me, everything a tactical carbine should be this and I get all that and so the point being is like well you can't compare this gun to a modern era gun with all the ergonomics all the upgrades all the attention to SAWC compared to something in the late 60s because that's what this is this is late 60s 70s technology where they took the AK the Israelis did from captured battles and they took it back and they go this thing is damn reliable how do we make a version of that that has the accuracy of an FN, accuracy of an AR. Voila, the Galil is born. The thing is, for the tabletop though, for it to be useful in my opinion, is we do kind of have to evaluate it according to modern standards because there are people out there that watch my channel for that and maybe they're thinking of AR alternatives. And I have a whole series of videos on that uh, AR-15 alternatives and by the way I still have another part of that to post I bet you didn't know that I'll get around to it it's a shorter one me and Doodle took talking I don't know if we brought up the Galil I honestly don't remember perhaps we did but maybe they don't want to buy an AR they're you know they're AR fatigued whatever so for that person I think the review is a lot more interesting talking about capabilities well, sure we could review it as a collectible but anytime you take something out and you can evaluate its performance and the performance falls short of where it should be, um, whether it's collectible or not, it, it, it really casts a pall over the entire item. Let's say we have a knife and it's, and I'm not even going to mention a name or a brand or anything. And I, and it's a collectible knife and for whatever reason, I decide to go test it and doing this or that, and it completely fails in the test. If I bring it to the table and go, well, it's just a collectible, you know, it's not really meant to per perform, 
it's really kind of a lie because it is actually meant to perform granted it was four decades ago if we're talking about the Galil or a facsimile, facsimile of a Galil it should in, if it's done properly inherit the combat capabilities of a very proven weapon system the Galil now for all its uh, upsides the huge downside of the Galil if you don't know is its extreme weight so they did away with a stamp receiver when they did what they called a product improved AK variant and that's why that's on the table that's actually a Sentry Arms RAS 47. I like the gun a lot. Product improved. And one way they did is like, well, let's go with a mill forging for the receiver. And they did. And who knows how much weight it adds. Another pound versus a stamped receiver like this one has. You know. And so, thus was born to Galil. Now, I said in the Tavor series of videos and reviews and updates that I've done, that I think, and this is just me talking, I've never read this anywhere, but I think the Israelis almost don't mind a heavier gun for full auto fire. More controllability, and they, for the last time I, I checked, the IDF does lay down uh, a lot of auto fire. But that's just me being the non-expert in their operations. I, I, but that being said, if they're popping out of an armored vehicle... If the gun weighs, as this one does, by the way, with the steel magazine, the freaking cast stock, nine pounds, two ounces, that's unloaded, by the way. Loaded up, it's going to be, well, add a pound to that. Well, actually, more than that, because this is, I think, a 35 round mag. So, I don't know, pound, four ounces, 20 ounces. You know, you're looking at almost 11 pound gun. That's without optics, that's just iron sights. But maybe the Israelis don't care. You know, the, the Tavor's not the lightest thing around, still. So, it's almost like they, they thumb their nose at super lightweight stuff. By way of reference, that AR I built back there, it's six and a half pounds. And that's with optic and everything, if, if I remember right. I mean, it's super light. It's covered in the best AR-15 build series of vids, if you want to look it up. Or one video. So, that's how I have to review it. I have to kind of review it as, well, with modern sensibilities of... How does it perform now compared to what's out there now to buying choices that we have now? You know, because if I don't, then I don't know. I just don't think it's, uh, it, I don't think it's interesting. I, I wouldn't watch the video, but I, I'm, I'm going to give a negative review, dudes. And let me back it up. Uh, <laughs> this is so funny how it works. This will be such an entertaining review. And so many TMPers love the negative reviews. It really shows how really I don't give a crap about anything but the truth. That's why TMP lasts all these years and guys keep coming back and watching. Because they know that I'm not a sellout to anybody. I just don't fly, give a flying you-know-what about it. It's just, I don't care. You know, I don't care ultimately about Sentry Arms. I don't care ultimately about any of the companies. I care about the truth. And they get rewarded when they do something well. I mean, I spoke very highly of the RAS 47. It's been a great gun. There's negative publicity on that, but I haven't seen it. And so I'm not going to go out and parrot it. I just have to go off my own data. And that's the way I roll here. I mean, and I'll roll it like that right now. When I picked up this gun from Mike, I, I was really, I took it out of his carry case and I looked at it and go, oh gosh, I was not excited. I've held Galil's before. I probably shot them in the past. I just don't remember. I mean, I've been shooting, gosh, since the 70s. So it all kind of blends. I, I think I shot a Galil once, but if I, uh, once, but if I did, it wasn't a lot. A lot. And I took it out and I go, yeah, this thing's going to suck. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just did. I had a negative opinion of it to begin with. It's so heavy. The build qualities we're going to see in this, uh, I don't know how long this lasts, hopefully not feature length, video, GRV I call them, gun review videos, is not great. Not the parts up here, but the buttstock primarily is what I'm talking about. But then we fast forward to the range. So I took it out immediately to the indoor range. You've seen some footage of that already. Maybe you're going to see it right now. And I got to tell you, the gun did pretty good. I mean, I, I was like, wow, this thing isn't sucking. Um, and I, I shot a variety of ammunition to test it. And it was 100% reliable. And it was pretty accurate at 25 yards let's cover that right now since we're talking we'll talk about accuracy you know from the the forged receiver i would expect it to be pretty accurate and here's the first shots 
they're not centered because the sight is such a pain in the butt to uh, adjust. So here you go. First shots, and that's standing at 25 yards. So I was like, that's pretty good. For a parts gun, parts is parts. 10 yards, and these are doubles. So I'm just doing double shots right here. Pop, 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 pop. I think uh, just sh oh, shoulder held, of course. Has a coarse front sight, and I'm compensating. There's a point of aim here, and that's 25 yards. I mean, that's that's okay. You know, that's okay for iron sights. So if we ex extrapolate that to 100 yards, I'm not going to say that's like, I don't know, two inches. That's more like three inches. And it's really hard for me to test them at 100 yards with iron sights because then I kind of get into the realm of uh, human factors versus the gun's capabilities with my eyes forever or whatever. So came away from the indoor range and I was like, well, maybe this thing isn't that, that bad after all. I will talk about the weight, and in my mind I'm thinking, if everything else works out on this gun, the highest rating I can give it is three stars, which is pretty good. I mean, three stars is like, that's that's okay. You know, that's not like a piece of crap that I, I you know, I wouldn't recommend to y'all. I'm not going to put it in my own arsenal at three stars. No way. It's got to be four stars or above for me to even be interested in it if I needed it, and generally I don't need nothing. But that, there you go. Philosophy of use is standard, except the old, hey, I never had a Galil, I want a Galil, or maybe I saw it in a video game, I want that gun. That's that's the philosophy of use. Guy's just like, oh man, that thing's so cool. This goes to that, by the way. Like, yeah, man, the Galil's so cool, I want a Galil. So there's guys out there, like I said, pent-up demand, and maybe they can go out, buy a Galani Sporter. And I did jump into some auction sites. There are a couple out there, they're not a lot. They're going for around 500 bucks. Uh, spoiler alert, don't buy it. There you go. Go spend your money more wisely, says me. Uh, you know, I it's an AK for all intents and purposes. I'm shooting this gun. Yeah, it's got a left side safety, but I'm thinking AK all the time. It just feels like an AK. It recoils like an AK. Uh, it's stiffer, you know, because of milled receiver, but I've shot milled AK variant rifles before. It felt about the same. Um, Philosophy use, I'll just leave it at that because I don't want to spend too much time on this. One, because I don't dig the gun that much. <laughs> if, I, if I dig it, I'll freaking give you a fun feature length. I want to rip through this thing. Let's start front to back. We'll get to the heart of the matter. I like you guys to watch the videos from start to finish. You know that. Um, I did try to put a can on it for testing. And I'm not really sure what that threading is on there. But I don't think it's a half to 28. It, maybe it is, but it, I think it's something different. Because uh, it did not fit an a AR can. And I didn't have that much motivation to test it any further. I did notice, Mike, by the way, your flash press was like totally loose. So I put a crush washer on there and tightened it up. Bayonet lug. I don't know anything about the barrel on the Golani Sporter. I think it is a U.S. produced barrel. Uh, as a nod to 922R probably. But quality levels, what steel, uh, is it excellent? Uh, judging from the accuracy I'm seeing, I think it's pretty good quality. I'll leave it at that. Uh, I love how the gas tube is on the Galil, and in this case, Galani. I'll just kind of use those in interchangeably, because we're, we're pretty much looking at a Galil here, right? It has the same parts, uh, and a lot of the parts were taken out of park bins, from my understanding, from actual Galils. You know, like the gas tube, I think the sights, the bolt, the carrier. Genuine Galil parts from the same gun? Probably not. It's a parts bin gun. And Sentry did that for a long time. And sometimes they did it well, sometimes they did it awfully. And that this might be a, a throwback to that those, those Sentry days when they were putting together some serious crap. And I think that's what's going on here. I think that's what's going on. So buyer beware. Their new production stuff, like the RAS, I think is good. Is it like the best in the world? No, but it's pretty good for the money. Pretty dang good. Okay, so we're going back here. Uh, one thing I really love about the barrel on the Galil is it'll go from one diameter to a thicker diameter and it actually goes thicker under handguard. Here's some photos. And I think it was like 0.85 inches right here. And it goes even thicker under the polymer handguard. Very AK-ish, this polymer forehand. Ergonomically, 
Um, we know that the issue here, it's just short. There's not a lot to hold. And, and shooting this gun rapidly at times, uh, I'm glad I had gloves on because, you know, I'm coming up here, touching warm. You may see me adjusting my grip. And there's different ways to mitigate that on an AK variant rifle with the Magpul furniture. You know, I, I was so disinterested, sorry, I didn't really go out and looking for you know, modifications to the Galil Galani Sporter. There's probably a ton. You could probably change all these things. But uh, don't go on a fool's errand, man. If you're trying to make it into something that's not, you'd be better off just getting a, getting an AR, getting an AK. You know, it'd be cheaper. You're going to end up probably with a better gun. Uh, I, that's just me. You know, if you want it as a collectible, the whole uh, Galil throwback, totally. But leave it as is because that's kind of why you bought it, right? How about the sights? They are better than an AK. I did notice the, the front bead on it as it came, very coarse. That's easily s swapped out though. It's basically an AK front post, has an AK style hood, so you'll use an AK adjustment tool, and I did. So, uh, Mike, by the way, it was like way off, <laughs> way off. I mean, I put a laser bore sighter on it, and man, your sights were so far off. So I got it close. Um, there's a double screw adjustment dealio on a Galil, and you can adjust the windage up here. But welcome to the 1960s, 1970s, where things are not fast, they're not convenient. Uh, your Most of your windage, or all your windage and most of your elevation is going to be done here. So, yeah, it sucks. But uh, we have that too with the AK. I mean, so I can't completely complain about it. And I love AKs. That's okay. I, you have much longer sight radius, though. That's way cool. So normally, on an AK variant, we're right here. They've pushed all the way back here. And they have a 0 to 300, 300 to 500 aperture. Uh, and you have this one right here. And the Galils, of course, had the tritium inserts, I think. I didn't even use this blade right here, that one. It, it shot close enough where I could do the testing, you know. This whole site right here, by the way, reminds me of the tech sites. Because uh, if you look, go to tech sites, websites, which are pretty excellent, they they have a whole new top cover they put on. And they have a different button and a rear sight module you put on there for your AK or SKS and a lot of other guns while you're at it. There's your milled receiver. Thick. We're going to have an ergonomic little discussion right here. I And I know this is all Galil, I think. Uh, I just don't like this. Several times you may see me doing it. I know the idea is probably blocking this so it protects it so you don't do an invert magazine dump. But several times I come down like this and I maybe it's just my lack of training on this type form. But I, I get it. And that's a training issue. You could totally get it. You're rocking the magazines, not straight in, just like you do an AK. This is, uh, I think, our genuine Galil mag. It's heavy. I didn't weigh it, but I'll ballpark it about eight ounces, seven ounces, something like that. Um, how's the wiggle on the mags? Uh, substantial, a lot, but it, so it is on, on a lot of AKs, so I can't really fault that. The trigger on this thing is actually pretty smoking, man. It's it's excellent, and I don't have my trigger scale still, at least the one here, but uh, I pulled it tonight at 5 pounds, 2 ounces. I think it was made by Tapco for the rebuild on the Galani Sporter, so good job. I mean, we pulled the trigger, and we're like, wow, that's a really good trigger. Uh, brakes clean, all that good stuff. Nice job. I, I wouldn't do a thing to the trigger. There's that safety I was talking about. It's kind of a repeater safety, and I really like that. You can do these on a standard AK, though. You can put a Krebs modification on it. I, I Guys ask me, he's like, why haven't you done that? Like, you did your AK variant rifle. And it's a fair question. I, I just didn't think of it. <laughs> and also, I'm uh, you'll see me in the shooting video of this. I'm so used to the AK way of shooting that I'm just swap, you know using my right hand, my strong hand, to swipe it off and on. Uh, I actually forgot about that, so whatever. A bigger polymer grip than an AK variant rifle on the Galeo Galani Sporter. And really nice material on that. It's nothing high end, but it's not rubber. It doesn't grab, so that's awesome. Um, I'm not going to do field strip, but here's what it looks like. Photos, insert, now. Um, very AK. It's just total AK. When I broke it apart, it looks like it. Uh, it's really a pain in the butt, though. At least this Galani Sporter, because it has a huge uh, extension right here. And getting the top cover back on is a real bear. Uh, it's a pain. And you, I almost would recommend using a screwdriver to push this button on, but it's not that simple. It's not just lining up because you have, since the button is so long, 
you have to push it deep and then when you push it deep it comes out of the notch so now your buttons out of the notch and you got to go through that process like five different times this is pretty infuriating actually uh safety here uh the charging handle on the galil uh i'm not a fan there's my modern sensibilities again uh hey this so you can use your offside hand yeah i get it i know i know thank you i know that uh, i still hate it uh, here's why though because i don't think coming underneath the gun is that big of a deal i'm going to extend the stock right now I, I just don't think it's that big of a deal so coming up under here and charging it you know they wanted to have it come up here okay and i i didn't shoot it enough to really like get in the groove with it and maybe i would have liked it more so there you go fair sling attachments front and rear and that will take us to the FN style paratroopish stock. Uh, I, I, I really don't know if this is aftermarket, but I kind of think this is what the Galani Sporter came with, is this stock. It's cast metal. It weighs about 1,000 pounds. Uh, it looks bad. It's painted. It just looks like something out of a damn swap meet. Now, since I don't know the history on this gun, I don't have its pedigree chart, I can't really be sure. And I haven't seen or actually thought to examine another Galani Sporter, and I don't really care. Uh, the, the takeaway, though, there's the table getting dirty again, is uh, it's not good. And it's not just its looks, its weight, its lack of, uh, you know, adjustment, modern sensibilities, I know, bad cheek well, I know, I get all that. But it's just the quality. So let's just go back to a real Galil. I did hold one. My buddy uh, Mark had one. He actually has two. And I think I held his and there was no movement at all in his. Uh, if I remember right. Now look at this. It's it's just it's rattly. It's rinky dink. It's just I don't like it. It's you know, tongue and groove so it snaps in here. Side folding. The gun can fire with it. Um you know, like that. There you go. Uh, how does it feel overall? Nothing funny you should ask. Uh, it feels heavy is what it feels like. It reminds me of a foul. It just feels heavy. Modern sensibilities, I know. Whatever. I mean, it, I just, I don't like, I shouldn't say I don't like the feel, but the pistol grip, the trigger, the interface is fine. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's a chunk of metal, which is good when you're firing it. It settles the gun down, and all, I've always said that. Uh, ergonomic bads, though, I've already talked about. The short forend, the charging handle, the mag release, not adjustable length of pull. But, the, again, that's the era. Era. Here's why I really don't like the gun. Uh, and real quick, the firepower was pretty excellent. Uh, 35 rounders, and then here's a Tapco that, that's meant for the Galani. And it, apparently... They fixed a steel feeding issue. I did a review on these, not the Golani ones, but the AR uh, mags. I should say the Galil mags. And they were not feeding steel rounds. They're, they seem to feed just fine. So, good job, Topco. So, I tested it with two mags. This one, that one, two of each. Didn't really notice anything related to the magazines. Firepower was amazing, comparatively speaking. But just like Galil. Galil was that way. How about track record? Aha! <laughs> well... It got so bad I had to cancel the test actually. And I and it's so funny here in TMP. We've we've laughed about this, the crew and I. Uh, you guys have laughed about it. I don't know what it is, but you can take a gun, it'll shoot all day long in the range. We take it out, shoot it, and we think we got some really good data from the gun. And I don't know what happens when I take that sucker out in the desert, but the curse happens. It always happens so here i am shooting the galani on trip one spending most of the day riding out there on the ktm 1190 and the damn gun has a stuck case from a uh, wolf now before the excuse patrol shows up which always makes me laugh uh it's an ak dude basically i mean the galil is a product improved ak it should shoot steel really really good that gun shoots steel really, really good. Every AK I've shot ever, uh, really good AK, I, I can't really think of one that didn't shoot steel well. Think of all the Russian ammo that comes in. What is it? Is it brass case? I mean, they have Red Army brass now, but now it's steel cased. That's That's been around forever. 
The gun's designed to shoot it. This gun should shoot it well. Now, I chalked it up to, I was being a little bit uh, gracious. I said, well, geez. First up, by, oh, by the way, you'll see videos. I couldn't get the case out because I had a bunch of stuff I have to take first aid. I won't go down the litany of things I have to take logistically. It's a nightmare, especially on the limited SAWC platform of a motorcycle. I did not have a cleaning rod with me. I'm not out in the woods, nor do I can, can I fabricate one. So that cut short, uh, testing short, and I was like, oh, crap. Oh, I was like, do I have to come all the way out here again? And I did, today, went all the way out, and guess what happens? Again, case stuck in the chamber. Excuse patrol. Yeah, but you should have, you could have, you should have done this. Dude, don't go all Mythbusters on me, man. I talked about in the, that in the Mutant Review. It's not my job to fix and troubleshoot and gunsmith take apart I don't care especially an AK variant it should just work but I got it out I was smart enough to bring a, a clean rod which by the way broke on me and I had to fix it while I was out there segmented articulated clean rod watch the video on the B channel it's pretty funny I don't know if I'll post a BRA so I put brass in it let's run PMC I'll run PMC and I'll run TAC A and we'll see how it does short story it also failed I mean like bad oh I didn't bring them it failed so bad it ripped one of the brass casings out of the chamber and tore it in half and I had rattling brass inside behind the bolt carrier I'm not making that up I'll I'll show you this weird cluster of, of malfunctioning that happened with this thing and I, I've never seen that before with brass. It wasn't even steel. It was brass. Probably PMC and TAC A. Yeah, but it was the ammo. Excuse patrol. No, dude, it wasn't. And if it does, I've always said that. If it doesn't shoot wolf right, end of game, dude. For an AK, it's end of game. No excuses. I don't, I don't want to hear it. And just to make sure, I was like, well, you know, I had this gun along. You know, I was shooting some targets for you guys that order from the web store. So I had my uh, mag ta tactical AR build. I was like, let me run the same ammo through that. Here's that footage. Yeah, it's just rocking and rolling, man. It's just, it doesn't care. Steel, shucking it all day long. Brass, all day long. PMC, all day long. TAC A, all day long. Ran like two max rows. I was like, okay, it's not the ammo, it's the gun. So track record was pretty, pretty bad. So I had a like five big fails in that all in the desert in that indoor i didn't see any there's that curse i'm telling about so now let's make a separation between the galani sporter by century arms this parts bin piece of sh crap i'm trying to do better um versus galani the galani is a comp uh, i'm sorry the galil the galil is a combat proven gun I mean, dude if i had a real galil do you think i'd be going through these issues no uh, -uh. I, I mean, I can't tell you positively, but dude, the combat record from the 70s to the 90s in the uh, Israeli oh, IDF, sure. okay, dude, it, it, it's unassailable. So we're talking about a Century Arms product circa the manufacture date of whenever this one came out. Just to be clear, just to be clear. Yeah, so it was disappointing. Disappointing. Let's, let's pretend I took it out to the desert and it shot really good. Like it was 100% reliable. It's black and steel out there. Uh, I would have come to the tabletop and I go, you know what? This, I would go, this is a lot better than I thought. Three stars. That's as high as I could take it. I mean, nine pounds, two ounces, three stars. Quality levels, three stars. I mean, that's uh, with that stock. But I can't really, I don't know for sure again if that's it was issued with that stock. I kind of think it was, like I said. Accessories, who cares? Who cares? It's not reliable. Who cares? Now, if we had a real Galil on the table, maybe, that's a big maybe, we could start talking about accessories and go, well, you know, look into this, look into that. I think what most guys do with their real Galils is accessorize it to the point where it, it, it represents or mimics the, a variant of the Galil. They're not like putting like a quad rail on it, putting optics. They're staying period specific researching specific variants of the Galil and mimicking that. I'm 
uh, you know, that appearance for second cool. And I say to that, rock on, man. I think that's cool. I don't criticize people second cool. I don't. I mean, if that, a Galil is like your fantasy gun, I say, if it makes you smile, do it. Do it. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, value, again, selling around now for 500 after this video, they'll probably tank. <laughs> um... I didn't, you know, I clicked around the internet and read some stuff, and guys are saying, yeah, I was 100% with those. Is there something wrong with this particular gun? Um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't, but I'm not Mythbusters. You know, I'm not going to, like, spend the time, don't want to, to try to figure out something that should work. Uh, there you go. Uh, so there's some other good options. I mean, the C93, also a Century Arms product, I mean, we really couldn't fault that for what it was. You know, when the Galil came out, it was competing against, what, the HK-33, the M16A1, the Stoner 63. Maybe you should go with that HK-33 knockoff, the C93. That would be a good one, if you want to go in that period. So, uh, yeah. Mike, dude, sell it. <laughs> sell it. This thing's a POS. There's no way I would keep this gun. Nothing fancy. See ya.